Welcome back. In case you're just joining us, Mr. Hakmet Idris, the Accountant General of the Federation, is our guest on Question Time. Now, what would this bring about in terms of uh, transparency and also the revenue drive and possibly reducing the cost of governance? The aim, naturally, is to block leakages, to block leakages, to block wastages, and to ensure that all revenues that are accrued, I mean, are supposed to accrue to government, accrue as and when due, and they are captured promptly. Um, banks will still play a role because a traditional taxpayer or income uh, payer uh, to, to an agency will still go to the bank. An individual cannot walk into CBN and begin to transact business. It will still be through banks. But such uh, accounts, which naturally the CBN <laughs> will control very strictly, will be swept on daily basis onto to the TSA with the CBN, domicile with the CBN. TSA is domicile with the CBN. What challenges might be set the implementation of this scheme? Like I said, with any other thing that is new, there could be some teething problems. One, the appreh apprehension on the part of key players, namely the banks. And not just the banks, even a, an ordinary Nigerian may look at it, ah, here is a new thing. What will it bring to me? How am I going to be affected? We assure Nigerians that it is for good because this is meant to ensure and engender transparency and accountability in the system, to ensure that leakages are blocked, to ensure tracking of income, to ensure that income are received as and when due. And I believe it's good because it will now show government that, yes, this is what I have in terms of liquidity, in terms of finance, in terms of cash, so that government projects can be done easily. What are those likely to see to the day-to-day -day running of this, uh, the TSA program? Well, the, the institutional driving force of this policy is the Office of the Accountant General of the Federation. And uh, we have taken that challenge, not just a challenge, it is an, a directive of government which we must comply with. We are putting, or we have already put a structure in place. There is a committee and there is a governing board to ensure to the realization and uh, implementation of this policy and to ensure its success. Our partners, namely the CBN, the budget office, the, the, the MDAs and the banks, we believe they are cooperating and they are keying in and we foresee no problem for now. And uh, we will issue out a, a guideline that will give direction, a very clear cut process and procedures that will be followed to ensure a full implementation of TSA as a, as a project and a policy of government. Do you have the right structures on ground to drive this scheme? Yes, on our part we have. Already, like I told you, a committee is there and it is working assiduously, uh, including weekends and nights. And that is why I'm here uh, as late as this time. And uh, I believe we are working and government has given us a target. We have no option or reason to fail. And uh, for our partners, the CBN, which is our major stakeholder partner in this project, we believe they are also working because they are likely, not only they are likely, they will provide the gateway, the technology, they will manage the account, the linkage between the sub-accounts of MDAs uh, will be there and managed by them. The accounts are domiciled with uh, Central Bank of Nigeria. We are only managers and it, to the extent that we make payments and so on. How do you harmonize the e-payments with the TSA scheme? Uh, it is just the same thing. It is just a, pol you know, we are, the Office of Accountant General of the Federation has embarked upon a series of reforms. One, we have had e-payment that came some years back. We had this issue of TSA involving capital. We have uh, IPPS involving uh, personnel pay uh, and wages. We now have the TSA as a full-scale, full-blown policy of government. All these are reform initiatives meant to improve our system, to make us a global player, to make us uh, you know, in tandem with realities of today, and to make us uh, be transparent and accountable in the way and manner we do things, and to make our economy be respected, and to make us a global player. Now, you've expressed so much faith in globalization, and some critics would rather express some natural skepticism 
to some of these global policies based on the natural peculiarities in our own setting. Uh, so what do you feel about this? Well, globalization is a necessity and uh, we must key in. We can't be on an island in an island of our own. We are a global player. We must respect international conventions. We must respect the views of uh, international partners. And then we have to bring ourselves to the highest, highest standard, highest global standard in terms of operating our economy, in terms of our account uh, accountability, in terms of our zeal to show commitment to transparency, and so on and so forth. Uh, we must be a global player and no going back. We have reports that about 500 billion naira has been saved as a result of the introduction of this scheme. How did you come about this figure? Well, hitherto, before the introduction of IPPS, there were a lot of, uh, um, well, leakages were there. And we blocked the leakages. And we weed out a lot of names which ordinarily wouldn't have been on the uh, IPPS platform. That accounted for the savings you are, you are talking about. And we will continue to do that. And I can assure you, this is the beauty of some of the reforms we are embarking upon. And uh, uh, we are see seeing and reaping the benefits, naturally. You can be a part of this conversation by placing your comments on the various social media platforms showing on your screen. Coming up on Question Time, find out the Accountant General's comments on the controversy over the joint allocation of the states and local governments.